It's time for Class Racing Today, the podcast for the NHRA Class Racing fan. Welcome back to Class Racing Today, episode 54 of the Class Racing Today podcast. ClassRacingToday.com is the website. Uh, some housekeeping right away in the morning. Uh, I guess it's morning for us. <laughs> um <clears throat> If you want to help support the show, you can certainly do that. Don't forget that you can go to classracingtoday.com, click on the Donate Today button, and uh, you get to choose the value you get out of the show. And we do want to thank uh, those that do continue to support us. Um, Chris Scammon <clears throat> last week decided to jump on board and become a, a donation supporter of the show, so we thank him very much for that uh, continued support. Uh, classracingtoday at gmail.com. If you have any questions or comments, you can certainly do that. Um, I think we're coming into spring. It's March. Uh, Brian, what's going on? It is a great day to be alive. I'm telling <laughs> you, like, I'm excited. There's racing on now to watch during the weekend. And yeah, it's still winter occasionally, but you know, it's not going to last forever. And it's just pretty cool. All the buzz and racing. It seems like it's getting, uh, getting pretty crazy early. Yeah. I mean, just. Like I told Leo, you know, when he was on last week, like, oh, you're going to make a run. Oh, it's too early. And then, bam, does it again. <laughs> like, can you imagine that, Bobby? You know, imagine your first one and then just doing it again the next weekend. Oh, that'd be wonderful. I don't, I don't like, I don't know what that would what would be like because I'm still basking in the uh, one that happened like months ago. So he's got two in a matter of seven days. But he had, he already had like eight leading up to that, I think. So he's just used to it by now. Probably doesn't even excite him anymore. Yeah, it's just like an old, it's like old pair of boots. You know, you just put it on, go out, kick butt, come home, take the boots off, go do it again. You know, yeah. What a lucky guy! I think I, I know for a fact though when that wind light comes on, that feeling is just absolutely amazing. Especially at national events, when that national event wind light comes on, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful. How about when you when your wind light comes on and you win like? a million dollars that's got to be <laughs> quite a feeling <laughs> could could potentially be fatal consequences in the car for me like i was in the shutdown area yeah like, crash oh my God. heart hearts just blew out of my chest why did why did he go down into the the run out area why is he out there in the sand <laughs> just overloaded chris you're the mathematician your mind would be all like overloaded with the tax implications of winning a million dollars and you'd be like oh my gosh but I don't know. The tax, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> well, that's why uh, we've actually got the million dollar kid on today. I want to talk about uh, a little race he's doing. And, you know, it's pretty cool. I see uh, all the listeners, too. Don't forget the two weeks in Vegas, the PMR boys are sponsoring a stock, super stock race for 10000 to win, too. So that's a, that's a good pregame for our guest today. The I'll call him the million dollar kid because. He is a kid, and he won a million dollars. So, Tyler Bohannon, how's it going today? Uh, living the dream. I guess I'm still like Bobby, thinking about wins from, you know, months ago or whatever. It's kind of hard to, when you have a big feat like that, it's kind of hard to come down from it. But uh, just living the dream, trying to get this race together and get it ready to go. We only got a little less than two months, so. Uh, a lot of work left to do and and to try to make the experience that we want it to be. You know, I want to I want to talk about the million dollar thing just a little bit cuz some of our listeners probably don't follow that stuff, but so how did that feel? Like, you know, you're kind of on the dark side. You're not in a stalker. Like walk through that race a little bit. Tell us about it that people that don't know. It's honestly a lot like a national event. That's kind of what I put it up against, you know, in the couple of times that I've been able to experience that final round uh, of a national event as well. It's, it's a lot like that. It's almost, you know, when you come around and you stop right there in front of the tower, it's, you start looking around and the, you know, the crowds of people and you, you know, what's on the line and it, it's hard to people tell you, you got to put that, that out of your mind and just, you know, go out and do your thing. But it's, you know, I, I say it's impossible to do that. And I think it helps to actually, you know, think about and understand what you are about the stage for. I mean, but the, the feeling it, it's not eerie, but you know, everything is silent. Like you, you really don't even pay attention to the car running, you know, you just thinking about 
what is on the line and trying to execute. I think at that point, once you've made so many runs executing, you're just going to execute like you had the last six, seven, in this case, nine rounds um, that you already had. You know, you made enough runs and you're there for a reason. So, um, you know, you making the runs the easiest part almost. It's just um, trying to get out of your head everything that's going on. It was a cool deal. So after battling nine rounds of some of the fiercest drivers around, when that wind light comes on, do you still remember the wind light coming on? Is it like a slow, like, where you see it? Or was it just like, holy crap, I want a million dollars? Of course, my opponent red lighted, and I kind of saw his red light fall. And I'm in a dragster that's running, you know, 150. And the first 60 foot of the racetrack was slow motion. I can remember, like, I felt like I said 15 words before I got to the 60 foot because at that point, like everything is just slow motion. And I was just trying, I went to the 330 and let out of the gas, but it felt like two minutes getting to the 330. It was just, it was relief, you know, like as soon as we left and then as I got to the 60 foot, it was just, you could feel the relief just going through your whole body. And that was the, the biggest thing. It, it, I guess that's it for me is relief. You know, I, you don't want to get that far. It's the, the hardest part is, you know, losing that far. I mean, nine rounds at a race like that or, or six or seven rounds at a national event. I mean, how many opportunities are going to have to get that far? And and so relief was the biggest thing, like just that two minutes that it felt like it took me to get down the racetrack and it just coming off of you. It was awesome. Well, the cool thing, what, it, you know, how we originally met last year when you did the class racer revival, I mean, you're essentially bringing some of that same feel and emotion to the Midwest where we don't have a lot of that experience, you know, like, it takes a lot of grade points to go to a national event. You know, you have to, I mean, everything still has to play out where, you know, at the class race revival last year, that was one of the coolest, you know, I went to the national event this year and it was fun, but I still can't imagine like just the whole atmosphere of that event you did last year in St. Louis, like to bring some of that big money, high energy, like just the whole atmosphere of that whole situation to the class race revival last year. That was really cool. I mean, that's, that's kind of neat the people that can go and be a part of that. I think, I think the mix of the atmosphere that, that the bigger money racing brings and the atmosphere of the, that national event stage, if you could combine both of those, like we're trying to do, or, you know, we did it last year, but I always want to try to make it better. But if you can combine both of those atmospheres, I'll never, you know, at my race or whatever, I'll never experience it as a racer, but, I think that atmosphere is probably the greatest experience that you could ever put together uh, in drag racing. I mean, you're just taking the two biggest stages um, that you can possibly, you know, combine. And, um, you know, I I would love to ask my dad that question because that's honestly something I've never asked him um, since last year or, you know, Matt Morris, but I can't imagine taking like something like the national event, like Bobby won last year. And then, and then the, the bigger money seeing it and putting it together, just, I can't imagine what that would be like. It's it, for me, it would be like a dream because it takes both of the things that I love the most and puts them together. Um, so I, I can't imagine. Yeah. It's uh, and the funny thing is, you know, I heard a lot of, you know, people last year worried about the competition and, Oh, I don't have a chance. And, I have about the lowest amount of confidence as possible going to your race in St. Louis. And, you know, it was, it was really cool. Like we're literally looking for things to do after day one, when we go out first round, cause my car is not that fast and it was unproven, you know, and there's a lot of reasons why I probably shouldn't have went, but you know, we actually managed to turn some wind lights on and it was, you know, it was really cool. I'm like, I would tell anybody out there right now that isn't sure if they want to come to your race this year, like, load the damn car up and go because I had no reason to be there last year and I actually got to turn on some wind lights and it was it was a lot of fun and really helped set up the year you know like anybody has a chance like the facilities and the track prep and just be a part of it like even if I would have went home first round like I would still go back every year that that's the the greatest part about drag racing I guess is with all the you know the aspects that go into it I mean everybody's on a level playing field. So, you know, it, it, it's, could be your day, any day. I know we talked about it before you guys started the show. Um, you know, any day 
you know, somebody, somebody can win and it's not going to, you know, the same guy's not winning every week out here. Of course, uh, Leo Glassbrenner is going to prove me wrong on that two weeks in a row, but you know, it, if, if it was easy, you know, if one guy was that much better than everybody else, or, you know, if somebody didn't have that day, I mean, you'd see the same guy winning every week and it's just not the case. So, I mean, especially at our event, you know, a couple of you, you had a good day every day. Um, and a couple of other guys did too, but you know, it was a different crowd in late rounds for the most part, both days. And that, that was just day to day, let alone, you know, year to year and event to event. So I, I agree with you. If you are a stock super stock racer and, you know, y- you need to be there. You really do. I mean, and not only once again, with the format changes that we've made, I mean, you don't have to win the race to, you know, be a part of the money. I mean, second round winners is 150 bucks and it, you know, it goes 150 bucks up from there. So you can go three or four rounds each day and, um, you know, pay the tab plus a little diesel fuel money. So um, it's good all the way throughout, you know, from winter all the way down and um, the experience, the money that's being put up I, for me as a racer, it'd be hard for me to miss. Let's talk about some of the changes. So last year, what do you think were some of the hiccups? Like what weren't you happy with last year? As far as things in the event that I was hoping would be better, um, you know, the, the, what I want to work on this year, the uh, the tech side of it, I, my guys were great. Um, I loved everything they did. I was just hoping that I could maybe be a little more formal about it and maybe do a few more things um, that I wanted to do just in tech overall, you know, and uh, maybe we can do that this year. I know we fall on top of an NHRA event, so that's actually my next step is going into that the tech side of things and working on that. Um Obviously, the holiday weekend last year hurt us. I think coming off of that will help a ton. And then shortening um, shortening the schedule into a three-day race versus the four-day race and then having Sunday uh, as well this year. That way, you know, we started on a Tuesday last year, if you count the test and tune, and that's a lot for guys. And I knew that going in. Um, it was just the opportunities that were given to us. And I think this year being – uh, a Friday, Saturday, Sunday event. And really, if you, uh, if you wanted to guys could show up Saturday morning and still run both of the main events. Uh, they're going to miss those Friday night, uh, races, but you know, just being able to condense the race, I don't think it's going to really push us, you know, push the racers any harder round around being we've added classes. Um, I think it'll just help, you know, run a smoother program, the shorter program and, uh, allow more people to be able to come due to the days off of work and stuff like that. But you know, the holiday, uh, the amount of time they had to take off and uh, just working on that tech department a little bit. I think those, along with the payout, you know, being a lot top heavy last year versus this year, uh, those those four or five things is something that I think what we've done this year will help a ton. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, that was probably one thing I heard a lot of people wanted more payout in the middle. So it's pretty cool that you rearranged that. Um I mean, you still look at it compared to, I mean, Bobby, you know, I know you're the, you're the NHRA guy, you know, you won your national event, you know, like what, you know, and I, I know you've talked about it before, but like total payout, where are you sitting at like contingencies and everything? Has that been pretty good, Bobby? Uh, it's been okay. I think I'm at like 6,500 maybe, but I think that's nothing compared to what it used to be back in the day from what I was told. So I've known, I, I know, uh, I was told people that won like 20 grand back as late as like 2009 or 10 or something like that. So <clears throat> but you know, what I is... definitely didn't have probably a couple stickers that maybe I needed, but yeah, it's not like it was, I mean, you're, we're, you're racing for this kind of money at, at Tyler's race is definitely going to blow away what you would win at a national and a national is what $340 to enter for one race. What's the bottom That's hole pay great. in for a national event? Like, where do they start paying? Uh, if you win second round or third round loser, they call it is three hundred, and fourth round I think is four hundred. So you start at three hundred there for third round, and then you only you increase by one hundred, and then maybe you increase by like another hundred and fifty or something. Um, so you you definitely you got to go you got to make it to fourth round to make your money back, or or just third round I guess to to only lose forty bucks. I think the advantage of doing more of the middle round like you're doing this year, Tyler, is just with fuel costs and expenses and, you know, the way the prices are all going crazy, like, you actually can have a pretty good chance of 
you know, making it cost effective too. Yeah, you know, I, we actually were planning on going to Vegas uh, for the spring fling, and then I was going to try to work out running the divisional national too. And me and the guys who were going to do it started talking, and it's like just what it'll take us to get out there, you know, it's just it, it's way too much. I think we're going to end up, you know, pulling the plug on that program for the year. But, you know, going back to the, the national event payout, I talked to Dad about this before I came on. He won Indy in 2003. He said it paid like 21000 And then in St. Louis in 2006, it was like 19000 Now, Division Four, where I just came from this week, Austin won stock. They upped their entry fee a couple last year, the year before. So they paid 2000 to win, plus they have a class sponsor um, for each of the classes that's 500 So that is more than any other division to pay 2500 and he had every sticker but two that that he could claim and you know so i'm assuming that might be an extra 15 or 1600 bucks but on the contingency side of it bobby i don't know about you but i got a call last september uh on a contingency check from march of 2020 that was wow. 18 months later so you know it was 100 bucks 18 months to get a hundred bucks. I mean, that's the biggest issue I see. It's not, you know, contingency lists are getting shorter and shorter every year. And that's understandable with business and the economy, the way that it is, but 18 months to get a contingency check is the biggest problem. You know, a race like mine, even though, yeah, it's, it's pretty close to what you get at a national say it's still probably two or $3,000 more, even with all the contingency. But you, when you go home, you have your check versus, you know, like I said, I don't, I think it, even on a, a good race, it still takes you six or seven months to get a, all of your contingency. Yeah. And that's if you end up getting everything you, by the time they ask for a W9 and then you get that and whatever else they want. I mean, I've fought that for, for years, you know, you send them two or three things they need and then they ask for something else and then they decline it anyways. It's just the contingency side of things is what really hurts. It's supposed to be it's supposed to be for the racer, for the guy that's spending money with your company, and they make it harder and harder every year to get that money. I think I left. You know, I didn't even win at your place last year, I think, and I was left for like 6500 bucks. you know, and had the time of my life. Like, it was just, it was incredible. Like, it shouldn't be that easy. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's the greatest part about this that that I see is, it's just when you leave, whatever you whatever you want is usually going to be in your pocket or in the mail by the end of the week. I mean, you know, if you left without it, but, you know, you can get it there. You know, it's just having to wait on it, you know. For me, racing is, is what I do for a living, whether it's pr promoting these races or being on the racetrack. And, you know, if, if winning a race is my paycheck for that week, then – what am why I'm, I, I can't wait 14 months, you know, to get paid from that week. It's just uh, for a guy like me. And there's, there's a few, a lot of guys out there like me trying to do it, you know, that, that don't have that big sponsorship that pays them every week or every month or, you know, stuff like that. They're relying on those winnings. And, and that's what I think is hurting this side of it more than anything is how long it takes you to get paid. You know, you can't, like I said, that, that weekly paycheck isn't there and you can't wait a year to get it. Yeah, contingency. I, fortunately for me, having this platform here helped me get contingency checks quicker. I was rattling off the names of people that paid, people that contacted me, and people I heard nothing from. And when I would say that, they would reach out. So it was a good sign to me that manufacturers are actually watching this program and uh, were able to respond to me. So I'm only waiting. I'm waiting for like one or two more, and I'm going on. I don't know how many months it's been since September twelfth. Five, six months now. So uh, we'll see what happens there. Um, people people don't realize, and, you know, you guys do now, and, and I've learned it over the last couple of years, manufacturers and the NHRA are watching. You know, people think that they're just sitting at their desks not paying attention. And, you know, I, I still don't change my comments that I have. Um, but these people are watching, you know, whether it's your personal Facebook. I mean, I've over the last few months, I've seen instances where, you know, they're looking at your personal, you know, social media stuff or, or platforms like this or, you know, all that stuff. They are watching. They might be silent, but they're watching. It's like big brothers out there, Bobby. Does that make you nervous? It's for, for better or worse, you know. Don't put up an inappropriate picture of uh, something 
I've heard story about somebody put up a picture and uh, was like, I don't know, puffing a little bit of, you know, marijuana or something. And then they got randomly drug tested at an NHRA event and failed. So, uh, like, don't be, don't be idiots with your social media pages. Let that be a lesson to you. Let's, uh, I want to talk about this, you know, the car that you purchased that you put Austin Alvey in. Now, Austin Alvey is all of what, 20, 21 years old? Like, he, he's a young kid, right? Is he 21 yet? Was he able yeah. to have a celebratory uh, brewski at the end of that event? That That's the – me – so I have a smaller group of friends that I've grown up with racing this kind of race, and Dylan and Austin, and there's a couple more. But me and Austin Alvey could not be more opposite. He did just turn 21 in October. He doesn't drink. He doesn't talk. You could ride 14 hours in a car, and he won't open his mouth, um, you know, but – so I, you know, I did the celebratory drinking and he got milk and cookies on the way home. And that's his, that's his celebration. Pick up some Girl Scout cookies on the way. Hey, here you go. If you win this, you can get that, some Thin Mints. That, that's his favorite part of it. It's, it's gotta be milk and cookies. And it, it's just amazing how different we actually are, but we race well together. I mean, when we go racing, just the two of us, we've done it twice in the last year and he's won both times that we've been out together. It's, it's amazing how good of a foot breaker that he really is. He won't use a two-step, um, which in this car, you know, Slade had always used a two-step. He said it would be fine, uh, swapping feet, but Austin as a, as a stalker racer and off the foot break, it's, it's amazing. He started out a little rough, um, you know, trying to get in the groove and find a spot. I mean, he hadn't sat in the car ever, um, but by second round, he just, he went to work and it was unbelievable to see the runs that he was making the car. We were still fighting some issues with it throughout the event. Um, just learning. And, uh, but Austin, no matter what the car did, Austin was there on the tree and, you know, it, he's, he's an incredible driver. He's going to be amazing. Um, you know, he's going to have a great career. And I think what he did in South Georgia in the super stock car proves that he can do multiple things. He's a versatile racer. And that's the tough part um, for me helping him, you know, as I try to tell him like what I think the car is going or what we should do. And I've, I've been around him enough now where I can learn. He won't say anything, but you can see kind of his facial expressions, what he thinks about, you know, your idea. And you can kind of gauge, you know, his reactions and, and come to an agreement by the time that we roll the car out there. And, and it's just, he can do every part of it. The only thing that he, he won't let me, help him with a little bit is, is top bowl bracing, but every other aspect of the sport he is, he's really good at. So are we going to see oh. uh, the Mosier replaced with got milk by like America dairy producers? It, it'll have to be something like that. Slate's got um, slate had the golden child on the window of all of his cars, but this one, and I left that because for him and he's going to be racing the car most of the time in the next couple of months. So, I left that on there. I said, I guess that's you, whether it's, you know, me or your dad, you're the, you're the golden child right now. We're going to leave that on there. <laughs> I want to see the, I want to see the milk mustache. Know. Alvy's lights were killer, right? So you said he was, o he was o 056 in the first round. This is the first time he's sitting in the car, but then after that, he's 22, 004, 25, 31, 12, and then 25 in the final. Uh, against Will Emmons, so yeah, he did a great job. He had never sat in this car before this weekend. You're telling us? Yeah, I actually uh, we had a meeting on Tuesday night uh, for the class race event. Uh, we we have a meeting out at uh, Austin's house and his or his dad's house, and we were sitting there. And I said, Austin, I kind of want to go get my stalker this weekend, and I don't want to I don't want to use a Division Four race as a claim because Division Four is tough, especially in stock and super stock. So I didn't want to use up one of my claims down there. I said, um, why don't you hop in the truck with me Thursday night? We'll go down there, get the car and you can race it. So we stopped at slates Friday morning and got the car and rolled over and got there about 30 minutes before the first qualifier. And he jumped in it and went and, you know, he, he red lighted in the class final, uh, on Saturday. And I think that kind of, he, he really thought that he could be really aggressive and couldn't red light and, so I think that class final kind of made him a little nervous going into elimination. So the 56, I think he was trying to relocate um, a spot on the tree. And then after that, he found it because, you know, I told him, I said, if you can be 20 to 30, 
you're gonna you're gonna win this race. And he he did that. He was twenty three or four times, like you said. And uh he had two bye runs and I know he I told him on both of those bye runs, he had a really good ladder. We got we found a good spot on the uh on the sheet. But both of those bye runs, I said just get as aggressive as you can and and see. And that's when he was four and twelve. But other than that, he was twenty two to thirty one. So he executed our plan really well and I think that just is a testament to how good he he's really is. Oh, that's great. And for anybody, uh, I just want to cover real quick since we're on that race. Um, Austin beat uh, Will Emmons in the final. I don't know how old Will Emmons is. I'm guessing he's a young kid too. But then I think is that Will's father, Harvey Emmons, who's, who's also known as Speedy Emmons, won Superstock uh, over Greg Stanfield. So it was a good weekend for the Emmons brothers and a great weekend for Austin Alvey. So congrats, uh, Tyler Bohannon, car owner, and Austin Alvey, driver extraordinaire. All right, let's get back to your race now. So the uh, entry fee for the weekend, is that the same as last year? It's actually going to be cheaper. Um, we did drop, we dropped the top side of it and, you know, like I said, added it throughout the rounds, but we actually were able to make the entry fee a little cheaper this year as well. Uh, it's going to be $550 uh, for the weekend. So both races, so roughly at $275 a piece. Um, you know, and that's 10 grand to win and $150 a round starting second round. So, um, that is 70 ish dollars cheaper than, than a national event. And it's, you know, I know second round winners at a national event get paid more, but you know, by, by the time it all shakes down, it's, it's still better, um, on the payout side of things. Yeah. To get money as a first round winner is great. Is that, that's what you said, right? First round winner. So sec if you stage second round, you get yeah. 150 bucks. Yes, I, b I believe that's it. I think I said that wrong, didn't I, the way I worded that. But that's I'm wonderful. Gonna... To win first round and get some money back is is always a definite plus. Um, so I think that's cool. And lowering the entry fee and still winning ten grand each day. And stock and super stock are separate at this event, correct? Uh, we're gonna. It'll be the same kind of format as last year. Once we get down to uh, it, it should fall to where the final. Um, is is a stock super stock final but basically it'll fall uh to one in each or whatever and then we'll run those all okay so then what's the winner of stock and the winner of super stock get before they run that final do we have that so before, yeah i do i had the, my, my phone uh shut off here but i got it back up here um basically before any bonuses, uh, it's 2,500, I believe, uh, my phone's not pulling it up, but it's, it's 10,000 to win 2,500 to ru uh, runner up. And then, um, a thousand, let's see here. I'll pull back up. So yeah, it'd be a thousand, a thousand in the semi. So that would fall. Let's see how this works to win your class. You would be guaranteed 2,500, um, before, before you did anything in the final there. So, uh, if you make it to the finals of your class, you're getting a thousand bucks for sure which i think that you know i try to put this deal i try to compare it to the divisionals and the nationals and you know if you win your class at a divisional you're guaranteeing yourself like i said 2500 which is, is more than most divisions are paying and you know once again you're going to get that the day that you leave all right always a plus um, any cool races again, like the CIC race you had last year? Is Comp Eliminator going to be in town? Is Eric Anders going to make an appearance again? Like, how about all that? So, yeah, uh, there's a lot of stuff that we're doing um, with the addition of the classes that we've added with uh, Super Comp and Super Gas and then condensing it to a three-day race. We're, we don't have a CIC race on the schedule, but we do have uh, that Friday night, we're going to have a $5,000 combo just like the second chance races that we did last year, that'll be a hundred dollar entry fee. Um, 5,000 to win thousand runner up. And then that one pays like 500 to the semis. It's, it doesn't pay back quite as far. Um, but you know, there's no heads ups in that just like the five granders last year and, um, you know, cheaper entry fee. And, and it's just kind of what, what we would call a warm up race, um, to kind of get you ready for, for competition. So, and then we do have, uh, I will say we do have some Friday night stuff for, for the dot 90 categories as well. Some shootouts for them. So Friday night's kind of the, um, kind of the, the add on races and stuff like that. And, uh, we, we comp eliminators coming back, 
we are excited about that. I think it's going to grow this year as well. Um, and our sponsors, the sponsors that we had last year, I was talking to Brown about this. I don't think a single sponsor from last year uh, did not come back this year. And not only that, I don't think that they, none of them, all of them, their support, you know, they added to the support they did last year. So they did more this year. They, they love the event. Um, got some good feedback on them of things that, you know, they would like to see changed. And we, we definitely took those into account. So with all the sponsors that we've had, that's been amazing that all of them have, um, you know, added to the support from last year and then uh, back to the Friday night stuff. But yeah, we'll, we'll have some add on stuff on Friday night, you know, for all the classes and categories, except for comp. Um, they're, they're still going to be on a one race for the weekend. Is there going to be heads ups on the Saturday, Sunday race? Yeah, so we'll, we're keeping the heads up in the Saturday, Sunday race. And I've talked to a lot of guys about this. That is the, that is the toughest decision for this event. It's just, it doesn't matter which way you go, you're going to lose the same percentage of racers. You know, if you decide to have heads ups, you're going to lose a percentage that, that won't come because of that. And then if you switch no heads ups, you're going to lose this exact same amount of racers because it, it's not, you know, they don't feel that it's a true stock super stock event without it. And I understand that I do. Um, it's, it's, I don't know which way I fall, you know, I, I'm going to go to the race, whether they have them or not as a racer. Um, but I understand, you know, a lot of these guys have spent years and years and lots of money, lots of time and sweat and blood to, you know, make their car fast because that's part of what this is. And I'm not that guy, but you know, I, I understand it a hundred percent and, you know, I, I can understand why they would want it. So, I'm sticking with that once again this year. And um, I think it'll be a year to year thing. Just keep seeing, you know, how the support is and, and what we can do to make it better. I, I think it's a great idea. It's a performance based class. And this is coming from somebody who is one of the slower cars in the class and lost f fourth round and stock at the, at the nationals where I was trying to double up because I got stuck in a heads up that I was trying to avoid. So that's it. That's what stock and super stock is. And it gives Maybe it gives somebody who's not a tremendous driver a better a chance to win. Also, who's not a who's not a million dollar you know bracket racer. Um, so it's I, I think it's a good thing. And maybe you can come up with something cool. You lose a heads up. You have one of them sponsors. Maybe you know can can throw them fifty bucks. You know something for a heads up a heads up run. Because how many do you think they might be this weekend? Two. You know, uh, like. Well, yeah, that that's what I was looking back on last year. I don't think we had four, you know, over yeah. the course of the week, I don't think we had four heads up. And, um, you know, I think that it's something that a lot of people worry about. And at the end of the day, it ends up not even being a factor. So, you know, I, like you said, it is a performance-based class. I think that's the best way to, to continue the event for the, um, you know, for what it is. And, you know, I just, it is something that you got to worry about, but I'm, I'm in the same boat as you, my super stalker. I ended up going to a factory GT deal because I wasn't, you know, it, it, there was less cars in the class and, you know, that's the adjustment I decided to make versus, you know, trying to get faster in that class. It's, there's so many different ways to do it. You know, you can continue to try to get faster and we did for a lot of years and um, we had a really fast car. It was just, there's a, a lot of faster people. So, you know, I made the decision to move uh, classes and do that. It's just, there's, there's so many ways to avoid heads ups. Um, it's not, you know, it don't always work out, but you know, it is fairly easy to do. So I think, especially in super you know, stock, where you can go GT or, you know, super stock, you can be J automatic today, GT K automatic next week. It's just whatever stock, yeah, a little bit more difficult. You can only, you have to stay in the traditional, you know, stock yeah, class. G the new GT rules really help that too, you know, with the um, just weight per cubic or, or horsepower rating, sorry, weight on that. So, you know, even if you're a, just a GT car or whatever, you know, some of the front wheel drive stuff, you can move around so many classes now and, um, you know, really get away. So stock, like you said, it is a little harder. Tyler, let me stop to... you right there. Now in GT, it, shipping weight does not matter anymore. You just pick a weight break that you think you can get your car in and you just – multiply by the horsepower rating of the motor and you can just go in any class now is that the way it works <clears throat> yes um when i when it comes to learning anything about these classes uh you know as far as the ahfs or 
you know, just rule changes and stuff like that. I go to Andrew Hill. Andrew Hill is freaking rocket scientist when it comes to this stuff. And I'm, I'm a slow learner. I can, once I get it figured out, I got it, but I'm, I'm slow. So yes, that is the way I understand it. That is the way it works. As long as you are over the, um, the class minimum, which is 2670, as long as you are above that, as long as you factor above that, you are good to run that class. Um, and I, like I said, I, as far as I know, that'll allow you to move, you know, four, maybe even five classes. If you, if you've got the places to put the weight or take it out. Um, so that's, you know, like you said, super stock, it makes it easier. That's a, yeah, it's definitely a huge advantage for GT cars because my shipping weight kind of really screws me in stock and super stock. Cause I'm locked into, you know, the natural class and wow. If they, if they go by that whole shipping weight thing that they just put out two weeks ago that they rescinded, if that's in effect for next year, it really <laughs> moves me into an area I've never been in before. And I'm going to have to throw a lot of weight in the car. So, uh, yeah, if they're going to do that for GT, I wonder if it's just, I wonder what it would be like. I don't want, I don't know what the repercussions of that would be or the, like the pros and cons of that. If they did that for traditional stock and I'm, super stock, I'm going to go on the record well. now and say, that's what's coming. I think they're going to abandon the shipping weight thing. They just did for stock and they're going to do something similar to super stock where you can move up and down based off of that breaks. I, I think it's coming too, because that, and I don't, I don't know, I guess I'm too young to really fully grasp that whole shipping weight um, argument anyways. Like I know when I called Andrew about it, I know it didn't affect me um, in either one of the cars that I run. Brian, I'm pretty sure if it does go into effect, it really screws with what you got. And Bobby, I think it uh, moves you quite a bit too. Like I said, I'd love to talk about that. Uh, but I do see it coming. You know, it's probably the most fair way. You know, it just you're going to piss somebody off either way you go, you know, with the shipping weights. And uh, I talked to a lot of guys who were really upset or I read a bunch of stuff um, about people who were really upset. So I see it coming too. maybe it might not be next year or it might be, you know, that might be what they spend this whole year, um, you know, gearing up for. What it really pointed out to me is how crazy some of the shipping weights are because it was actually going to push. Like, I think the Camaro would have been the same, but the Firebirds would have, that can run double aid now would drop down to C like, I mean, yeah, that I talked, I know the firebird was a, the big, big thing that got it all, all started because the 98 car, I guess was the, I actually talked to the source, I guess, of how that got started. And it had a lot to do with, you know, Pontiac being the official car and, you know, they wanted that 98 car at the 98 winter nationals. And the only way to do that was to allow the LS one, or I'm sorry, the LT one in it because the LS one was not ready. So, um, you know, from there, I guess it never got changed. And that was really, I think, how this whole thing got started is somebody wanted that looked at. And next thing you know, yeah, the Camaros didn't get moved that much is the way I understood it as well. But the Firebirds, you know, Bob Butner's got a LS1 2000 Firebird or something like that. And it was like he was going to put a stick in his because he just wants a stick shift. And it's like – the moves that it was going to make, it wasn't even worth putting a stick in it at this point is the way kind of understood it. Yeah. It was really going to mess with that whole indie, you know, a stick shootout. Like it was pretty much remove all of the firebirds, which I think the Camaro guys are happy about, but yeah, it's not the right way to do it either. Like how do you change a combination that's been run for 20 years? Like that's. Yeah. that That's, that's kind of the way I took it too. I mean, you know, I have one guy in mind, but, it is hard that, you know, you leave it in the book for 20 years or whatever, and then you just pull it out. And there's, you know, there's a handful of guys that have that, and you're just going to change, um, you know, they've got countless hours and countless amounts of dollars in these things because you said they were legal. And, you know, knowing well that that it never was available, I guess, and you you tell them how you can run it, and then, you know, six, seven, eight years down the road after they build them, you're going to tell them, nope, you can't do that anymore. It's just – I understand the change because they're right. It ain't, it isn't in the book, but at the same time, these guys have already, you told them they could do it and now you're going to pull it. And you know, that's just a waste. They can't even sell that car at this point because it's changed and it ain't worth nothing. So I, I definitely think that by the end of the year or the year after that, everything's going to be like GT. On the backside of that, it's okay. You just totally illegitimated that firebird, but yet there's combinations that are illegal that disappeared 
like it got rid of just as many cars as it screwed up and that's the weird part i was talking to i guess the first person that brought this up to me was austin williams and like the the big block 69 camaro he was saying you know he's heard of stuff being factored out of stock eliminator and by the changes they made the the l what i can't remember the l, l1 the uh 69 camaro with the 427 was like going to be factored yeah, out of ZL1, stock. Exactly. i think yeah zl1 i think is mm-hmm. something like that. that that combination was technically factored out of stock eliminator now you know and i can name you know mclean's got that uh, uh, i want to say that's what brenda grubbs runs maybe i mean there's there's probably six or seven of those uh, brent posey runs it out of north carolina yes you're gonna tell them they can't even run stock eliminator anymore and, <laughs> yeah. you know, i figured they would just ju- adjust the weight break to uh something lower um to I, keep double a i you saw know. it i saw an extra class coming yeah you know like they used a, to triple a stock <laughs> I want to go back oh, to your race with the heads up. So I'll, uh, the thing about that is it's okay. Yeah. There's heads ups, but now that the price, you know, or the, the payouts are more low, you know, Bobby, like when you went out fourth round that heads up, well, you're getting a pretty good money now out of, you know, the class race revival race. Like, yeah, heads ups are a thing you might lose, but you know, if you're four rounds in, you're still getting a pretty good, you're getting some money back. You, you know, and that's, I just looked at, I was looking at third, fourth and, and fifth round payouts here. Um, if you will pay just a little bit of attention, you know, to, to qualifying in the ladder, you can avoid that heads up uh, a couple of rounds, you know, especially first round. And then if you, you know, really do some, do some math, you can avoid it second and third round. At that point, you're getting 400 plus dollars. Um, so you'll try to avoid it for the next race again and, and hope it works out. But if you got that same heads up both days, fourth round, you're getting 900 plus dollars. I mean, you just made money on the week, so it does suck when it, when you lose those. But like at that point in the race, you're making money. But you're having a, a race on Friday night that has no heads ups, so they can make money there too. So you're appealing to both crowds in one weekend. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to. Do. I'm trying to. I, you know, that that was kind of the. It really worked out last year because you had a second chance race for for both events, and it, you know, if you couldn't, um, you know, if you couldn't make it, if you couldn't avoid that heads ups in the in the in the main event, the, the second chance race allowed you to to have that opportunity to win the race and not have to worry about heads ups, which we, you know, I think appealing to both crowds here with the the combo on Friday night will will help. So you're kind of in the inner sanctum of higher dollar bracket racing. You know, obviously you promoted your race last year. There was other races that happened last year. Is there any talk about doing anything there? Or do you have any insider information on there is just like the pmr race do you know of any more of those coming for this year or no uh me and bo talked quite a bit um early february late january about his event and you know with his schedule this year with going back pro stock racing and stuff like that i think uh i do know that they're not going to have their event this year um he did tell me that so you know i know what's uh ken is it mealy ken mealy yeah. He'll have his at Numidia again, I believe. I really wanted to make that event this year, but it's is on top of one of our um, events. And then the PMR deal. I, there, there's a few of them out there. Um, as far as like the big three, four day, you know, like ours last year in Bose, I, I think we're going to be uh, the only one on that scale, which it does suck, especially for me not being able to attend them. But you know, I think if you can continue to have, you know, Bowling Green does the five grand combo uh, at their national open. So there's probably five or six races this year where you can go run for big money uh, in a stock super stock car. Hopefully it'll grow. And I, I think Bo will come back with it. It's just, you know, he's he's got a lot going on right now. I don't blame him for not uh, being able to make it happen. Yeah, it's uh, just kind of also shows the importance of supporting the ones that are out there, whether you're in vegas in two weeks or whether you come to your race i mean it's everybody wants to complain about not having the opportunity but you also have to support the opportunities that are out there that's that's the biggest thing that i try to get across to people is you know me and brian aren't the guys that can just continue to have this race and not worry about the financial aspect of it i mean it's you know it is a business for us it's it does have to uh you know break even or make a profit i mean it's not you know we don't have 
corporate sponsorship behind this that's a quarter million dollars and it doesn't matter what happens you know it's not camping world it's not over top of this giving millions of dollars i mean it's it's our money on the line and um you, you know it, with his job and the way i live my life it's just not it's a business and it's it's got to it, it's got to make money or you know at least break even we can't it's coming out of our pockets when we do lose so you know if it continue if if we can't grow it and and make a profit then it's it's going to go away and the same with the rest of these guys none of these guys that are doing this you know uh, the race at vegas or ken mealy's race i mean these aren't races that you know somebody is is putting the bill other than the guy's name that's on the flyer is that some of the reason for uh allowing in the outsiders with the dot 90 and super gas and that stuff does that help with sponsorship and everything too it, it does i mean the big thing for me on that is I really wanted to add to the race anyways. Um, you know, I would love to one day just have uh, an event where all the sportsman classes are held, you know, from comp down to uh, top sportsman, top dragster. But the big thing for that is, you know, you can add a little bit of sponsorship. You can add a group of racers that are also looking uh, for an outside event. And then, you know, just their support will help try to, you know, get to the black on, on the end of the weekend financial side of it. It's, you know, between them needing a race, you know, another, another race other than an HRA to go to, and then as well as trying to, trying to help the event get to the, to the green on the, on the profit. Yeah. I've, uh, I think it's a good way to suck those, those guys into the stock super stock world. Like, why do you want to run around there in your pipe rack when you can do cool wheelies and actually go to the car show, you know, cars people want to look at. My, my bracket racing buddies, I, I sent them all a picture of the Corvette yesterday when I when I cleaned it up and kind of got it a little closer to mine. And they were like, man, that thing's really cool. And I'm like, well, why don't you come to town and you can drive it. And then by the end of the year, you'll have one. And they're scared to death to do it because, you know, a lot of those guys are racing for a living and they're racing for 50 plus thousand every week. And they know they won't be able to do that. But the cars, you know, they're all in. They want to come drive them. And, you know, I think, like you said, that's a great way you put 80 or 90 of them in there where, they're not just there for themselves you know they have time to go see the whole event or stock super stock and i think it does draw them you know to those classes which is what i love so um you know i hope it i hope maybe we can gain a couple stock super stock guys for it well and it's also gonna buy more time in between rounds i mean you gotta have something like you literally can't have stock super stock going down the track every every round like you know as it gets close like the turnaround time you guys did a really good job last year but i mean it still gets pretty hectic it does. And, and that was a big, uh, a big one on my list last year of, of worries um, was trying to keep our biggest thing is we want to keep cars going down the track, but you can't, you know, these, these cars aren't five minute turnaround cars. They're, you know, 20 minute turnaround cars. And, um, you know, adding those two classes is not going to change the experience for stock and super stock racers. It's just, if anything, it'll make it a little better where if you did think we were rushing a little bit, you won't have that now, but you're still not, it's still not a 14 hour race. You know, it's, um, just trying to make the experience better, uh, for the stock super stock guys, but as well as give that experience to somebody else. I guess the question I have, are you guys going to do the racers appreciation party again? Because, you know, they should have to pay extra to get into the cool guys club. You know, you can have like the bottom side there for the 90 guys, but you know, if you can upgrade, you buy a wristband, you can get into the cool guy club and hang out with stock super stock guys. Yeah. Yeah. We are, uh, we are doing that racer appreciation party uh saturday night i believe is when it is yes saturday saturday night uh patterson elite wagner's classic cars are sponsoring that so if you see uh scott or wyatt wagner or anybody from patterson elite give them a thank you because that that party is kind of not only for you guys as a, as a thank you but for us um to kind of get out of the tower and and get off the be able to kind of meet with everybody and talk to everybody and, and have a good time ourselves because you know it, it kind of does turn into a job it's something that I do love very much, especially this event. Um, so I do enjoy it, but that's kind of a way to get away and, and meet everybody and have a good time. So uh, be sure to thank those guys. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited. We are probably good. We're working on making that party a little better, but yeah, maybe we'll, uh, we might not let them all together. You know, it's just some of those stock super stock guys. They might not want them, them guys in their party. That was the, uh, that was pretty awesome. You know, I'm I'm not even a drinker, but it was pretty cool to hang out and just meet people from all over. Like, there's a lot of I'm new to this thing, and there's a lot of people I didn't know, and it was that was really a really cool part. And then I got to watch Bobby almost get hypothermia walking back to my trailer, and then to repay me, he cranked on my blinder that night. So yeah, 
You see Fazio out wandering around. If he doesn't have his own car there, you might want to watch out. Don't let him sit in your car. You might be pushing buttons. I, Lend me a coat. <laughs> it's funny you say that. Uh, Austin Alvey came and got that stalker last night, and he brought his little brother with him. And all of a sudden, we were working on his trailer, and I hear a horn blowing. And I'm like, what the hell is that? And I turn around. He found buttons on that damn thing I ain't even found yet. It has a horn on it. It has so, a horn? <laughs> Yeah, it has a it has a damn horn on it, and he had found it. Not neither one of us had found it yet. Only a Cummins. <laughs> yeah, that's. I, Megan texted Britt last night and said, "You didn't tell us it had a horn." He said, "Well, Slates has a horn. Mine never had a horn because Slates the golden child." Yeah. Oh, <laughs> turn signals, power windows. Does it still have all that? Still. It it has everything but turn signals. It's power power windows, power seats, uh, the the whole nine. Nice. How about the uh, streaming? This is going to be uh, streaming live online on YouTube for everybody to watch or on your website? Yep, it will be live streaming again. Uh, we're going with Bank Shift this year, just with scheduling and everything. Um, they, they fit the bill for us this year. So Bank Shift on that. Um, Legacy Heating and Air is our presenting sponsor for that. So uh, Matt Alvey and the whole Alvey family, you know, once again, I what I said about the sponsors earlier, we, we could not do the event again this year without them. So if you see any of our sponsors at the event or at any event that you go to, please give them a big thank you. Um, huge, huge part of this event, but yeah, bank shift will have uh, the whole weekend live coverage this year. I'm still learning their process a little bit. Um, I don't know as far as if they just stream it from, I believe they stream it on their Facebook as well as maybe a YouTube page um, similar to all the other ones. And for all those wondering if Bobby is going to be there doing driver interviews again or if we'll be there, uh, we're open to sponsorship opportunities. Maybe you got a car for Bobby to drive, or maybe you want to sponsor him to come down there so he's there and can do it. it sounds that's a, that, yeah, that, that's something that we're, you know, definitely looking for. I know a lot of people really enjoyed even the bracket racers, um, like a lot of our bracket racers that attend our other events, they watched all week and, and, I had four or five bracket racers commenting on posts saying, you know, the driver intros and the, and the driver interviews were really cool. Please try to bring that back. So yeah, if you guys are, um, you know, looking to come or, you know, have an open seat, you know, give them a call because it, it really helps the event. And if, you know, it'd be a big help to not only um, our event, but Bobby and, you know, everybody involved there as well. Oh, we got a comment on Facebook. Uh, I haven't found the horn on mine yet. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess I got lucky. Like I said, it's the golden child is the one that got the uh, got the horn. He'll have that thing upgraded to a train horn. So when he's going by the winter, the stripe beam. Arr, arr, like, that might be a good. That might be yeah. a good finish stripe. You know, like you're down there, you're about ready to dump, hit the horn a couple times just to really screw with the guy next to you. I told Austin that we need to on heads ups you know if you're driving away from the guy just just lay on the horn as you, as you drive away and a heads up probably won't happen very often but we'll use it when we get the opportunity you should just do like the the generally like the whatever the dixie air horn have that so when you let off the when let off the two-step the horn blows that thing's leaving that'd be pretty awesome uh now i'm gonna look up how to do that thanks <laughs> well awesome tyler we appreciate having you on and everything you're doing as far as getting this race going again it was uh by far one of the coolest experiences i've been a part of and scheduling this year it's looking pretty tough when you're in the ag world if i can get that far from home but i hope for a snowstorm but i don't hope for a snowstorm like the uh the stars are all gonna have to align but if there's any way i can make it i sure don't want to miss it yeah and i understand that you know uh, jeff atkinson is a really good friend of mine as well and you know he's in the same business so and he he told me that's it's tough for him in the south to you know make a move that time of year so we understand that but um yeah we're, we're looking forward to it we really appreciate you guys i mean you guys helped us out a ton last year you know with the support from d5 and a lot of your followers so uh, looking forward to the event hopefully everybody likes the changes that we've made and it helps the support and brings back everybody um it brings back everybody from last year we do have um, what I will tell you as far as entries to this point, uh, we do have a lot of new racers um, on the list. So that's a good sign um, that we have a lot of new faces already entered uh, for this year's event. But it's going to be fun. Uh, don't know if we'll have the, uh, the 
the atmospheric conditions that we had last year, but uh, still going to be a fast race, a fun event, and we just want to thank everybody that that makes the trip. Well, you know it'll be a it'll first class event. So if you're out there listening, tell your friends, tell their friends, but don't wait forever because this thing is definitely going to, I mean, there's entries are piling in fast and you're not going to have forever. So don't be sitting on the outside. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Tyler. Have a great, uh, great week. Again, classracingtoday.com is our website. If you want to help support the show, go there, click on the donate button. You get to choose the value you get out of the show. Turn it back into dollars and send it our way. Everything is helpful and much appreciated. Thanks a lot. If you want to help like sponsor the show, you can also do that. Send us an email at classracingtoday at gmail.com. Thanks a lot for Bobby and Brian. Have a great one. Thanks, Tyler. See you later. Okay.